Hi again. Um, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about drop spindles, um, which is what I mentioned the last time I was doing one of these. Um, today we're specifically going to be talking about bottom whorls. These are all three bottom whorls. What that means is that the whorl, the large part, is at the bottom of the spindle while it's spinning, rather than at the top, which is what a lot of people are used to. So these are three similar but slightly different ones. Today I'm mostly going to be talking about these two. So first, there's a couple myths about bottom whorls. And now I'm not, I haven't been spindling all that long. Um, I learned to spindle spin at Rhinebeck in 2008, so that's October of last year. Um, but I'm fairly adept at this point. Um, I can make anything from lace weight to chunky weight on my spindles, um, top and bottom whorl. Um, I've been spindling, I've been spinning on the spinning wheel a little bit longer. Um, and as you can see by the wall of fiber behind me, um, I run a fiber arts business. Um, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about some of the myths around bottom whorls. Um, I'm not, as I said, an expert, but I have done my research. Um, and so if anything I say is wrong, please feel free to let me know and I'll correct it. So one of the first myths about bottom whorls is that they're all heavy. And this then goes to a couple other myths, but we'll get to that later. So this is very small. This is a Hatchtown spinimal. It is the bottom whorl. It weighs approximately somewhere between 0.5 and 0.6 ounces. That's pretty small. It's pretty light. In fact, it's as light as many lace weight spindles that a lot of people are used to. Now, you'll also notice that there's no hook on this. There is a notch up here um, and several down here, um, but there's no hook, which is how a lot of people are used to hanging their yarn. So, since I don't have a hook, I have to, to make a little bit longer of a leader. And I'm going to actually start with straight from fiber. This is a uh, combed top. Um, and I'm going to start by making a leader. To do that, I pull out a little bit of fiber from here and twist with my fingers. And as you can see, I'm basically, basically what I'm doing here is a really slow vi version of exactly what your spindle does, is pulling it out and giving it twists, which makes yarn. So as I do that, I'm getting a distance of yarn that I can then tie onto my spindle and actually use to as a leader to tie to start the rest of my yarn off of. Now, normally if I'm actually doing this for myself, I use I twist it with my leg because you can get more twist in any given push, but as you can see, this is working just fine. Now, a little bit longer. Now, if you're intrepid, you can use it exactly like this. I'm not intrepid. I am lazy and I don't consider myself to be quite adept enough to try to use it straight like this. So I actually make this into a stable yarn before I use it, which means ply basically plying it, but since I only have one, I'm going to ply it on itself. By folding it in half and letting go at the bottom, so it twists back on itself. And this is a pretty low twist yarn. If you were actually trying to use this for yarn purposes, it would be pretty under twisted because, well, I just spun it with my fingers and that's not the most efficient way to do this, although it can be done. That's probably how it, star how, how it started. So, I now have a piece of yarn and a spindle. Yay! So the first thing you need to do is to attach your 
fiber to your spindle. Which you can do, I'm going to do because, again, I'm lazy, with a simple half knot at the bottom. Okay. Now, this is where a lot of people have problems with bottom whorls. You keep on, a t on a top whorl, where you're coming from underneath to up here, you can just go straight around the whorl and attach it to your hook. Or if you don't have a hook around your loop. Now, if you do that from here to here, and then you try to attach it, you're going to get something that's very tends to be very unstable. So instead what you do with the bottom whorl is you spiral it up the shaft like this, which, mean, which, gives, which means that this fiber now has friction all along this whole surface. And now at the top, you wrap it around your finger like this, put your finger back on the top, and slide it off, and hopefully I did that right, and I did. And now you have a half hitch. And you'll notice how my fiber is now hanging perfectly straight, and my yarn is hanging off the, off the, more or less, the top of the spindle. You'll notice that unlike on your hooked spindles, it's not hanging off the exact center because there's no hook there. Now, this means that this bottom whorl will probably wobble a little bit more, but with the bottom whorl, because of the physics, which I won't get into right now, that doesn't matter. Don't worry about it.